Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last video I covered that how you can start writing your unit test which is related to your actual model which in this case is step counter. So in this video we are going to move to the next step which is actually testing the controller and testing the interactions of the controller. So I'm going to go ahead and add a brand new test into my unit test project and I'm going to go ahead and search for something called test. So unit test case class, that's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and click next. And now we can give it a name for our controller test. So I'm going to call it step tracker controller test dot swift. All right, I think dot swift will be added automatically. So let's remove that. So the whole point of writing the controller test is to check the interaction of the controller, that the, how the controller is actually behaving. It is, is it updating the counter? Is it updating the label? Can we press the button and all those kind of things? All right, so in this test, we're gonna remove the teardown. We don't really need that part. We will remove the performance example and we will even remove the test because we will be creating our own test. All right, so what exactly are we testing? Well, we're testing kind of like the same thing, which means that when the increment button is pressed, it should update. So let's go ahead and try the test. Should update the counter or the step counter should update counter uh, successfully. You can be a little bit more descriptive over here. When the increment button is pressed, should update the counter label successfully. There we go. Okay, so let's first get started. The first thing we need to do in order to unit test our controller is to get access to the controller. Now in that case, in this case, we don't really have a controller. We do have a view controller, but we're not going to be using that. So let's go ahead and delete this view controller. There we go, move it to trash. So currently we don't really have any controller, but that doesn't really stop us from writing the test. So let's go ahead and write the test. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the storyboard. So UI storyboard, and we're going to use main, so main, and bundle will be nil. Good. Now using that, we can actually create our, or get our step counter view controller. I'm gonna go ahead and say storyboard dot instantiate, passing in the identifier, we can pass in the step counter view controller. And I'm also going to cast it to a step, step counter view controller. In the last test, we actually tested out just the model itself, the, how the model is behaving. And in this particular test, we are testing out how the controller is going to behave when we increment the counter, decrement the counter, and so on. So now we have created the step counter view controller, and I'm gonna go ahead and say step counter view controller dot increment counter, which by the way, doesn't exist. Well, in this case, the, even the step counter view controller doesn't exist at this point. Once we do call increment counter, a label on the screen will get updated with the new value of the counter. So what we're testing is XCT assert, and we are saying that the value of the label will be one, and we will call the label step counter view controller dot counter label dot text. So this is what we want to test now, that when we press a button increment counter or fire a function called increment counter, it will update the label and the label will display one. But obviously you can see that the problem, we don't have a step counter view controller. So let's go back to our application, the actual app, add a new folder just to make sure that our things are organized, controllers. And now we can go ahead and create step counter view controller. So let's go ahead and add a new file. The Swift file is perfectly fine. We'll just add step counter view controller and create it. 
So now let's go ahead and say step counter view controller, UI view controller. Go ahead and also we can import UI kit. Great. Now in the step counter view controller, there are a couple of things that we need. We need to have the increment counter function. We need to have the label and everything. But before that, what we will do is we will jump into our storyboard and we will create those things in the storyboard. Let's go ahead and select the view controller and make sure that the view controller class is actually set to the step counter view controller. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and add a label. So I'm going to go ahead and add or drag a label. There we go. And put it anywhere you want. Let's put some constraints on it. I mean, you can use a uh, code that it will create dynamically the UI. You don't have to use Storyboard if you don't want to. That's perfectly fine also. Let's go ahead and add another one. So what do we need? We need a button. So let's go ahead and find the button and put the button right here. Let's go ahead and put some constraints on the button. Oops, there's a lot of different constraints. All right, so let's go ahead and select all of these. All right, and let's go ahead and select the button and make sure that we call it increment button or something. Increment. And I'm going to select the button and do command equal to and perfect. So the button is there now, it's increment button. The label is also there. But none of these two things are hooked up to our step counter view controller. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create an IB outlet week var and I will call it a counter label which will be of UI label and the other thing that I'm going to do is create an action for the button so IB action function and you can say increment counter perfect now I'm going to go ahead into our storyboard and make sure that everything is hooked up correctly so let's go to the storyboard Let's right click on it. You can see increment counter. Just go ahead and drag it over here and say touch up inside. And also the counter label, we can connect to the counter label. Perfect. All right. So both of these things are connected. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure that our unit test will know about the step counter view controller. And in this case, we can actually use a testable import. Testable import step tracker. So this means that everything in the module step tracker will be available to us. Let's go ahead and first build our application. Okay, let's go ahead and run this test and see if it passes or not. So the test is going to use a UI storyboard. Uh, the main storyboard is going to instantiate the step counter view controller, which is, by the way, the name that we haven't really given to our storyboard. So let's go ahead. So this test is definitely going to fail because it's not going to find some ID of a storyboard called step counter view controller. So we still have to update that. But our test is trying to run and you can see it failed. Let's go back to the storyboard. Select this step counter view controller. Make sure that we set the storyboard ID to step counter view controller because that is how we are going to create an instance of step counter view controller. Let's go again and jump into step counter view controller and run the test again. And we'll wait for the test and now the test is kind of failing again. Now the test is failing for a reason. The test is failing because the view is not really initialized. So basically what's going on is the counter label is coming out to be nil. So let's go over here and say step counter view controller dot view. This is a trick that you can use to initialize your basically uh, view that load is going to get fired and all the IB outlets and action will be initialized successfully. Let's go ahead and run it again. So test is kind of like directing us, telling us what to do. Okay, so finally our assert is failing. And you can see the assert is failing because it's saying that we were expecting it to be one, but we got label. 
So the label is not showing one, it's just showing the label, which is the default value of the label. We can see it's right over here. It just says label. So we need to update the label to one or something else so that it, the test will actually pass. So that's the job of the increment function. So let's go over here and see what the increment function is doing. And you can see it's not really doing anything. We already tested out our step counter. So let's go ahead and create a step counter, which is step counter. Perfect. And since the step counter is created as a structure, I'm going to go ahead and make it a var. And then you can say step counter self dot step counter dot increment. Actually, let's change it to let. I'm going to go ahead and run it. You can see that if you change it to let, we are trying to change the structure. So that's not going to work. So that's why they initially we change it to var. Okay, good. So now that we are passing or we are calling increment, and this will hopefully increment the step counter, all that is left to do is to initial, or to assign the value to the text. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to say it's self dot step counter dot number of steps. Perfect. Let's build that and go back to the test, run the test again. And hopefully this time our test will pass and you can see it's actually passing because now the increment counter has a logic to actually update the label. So the test that we have written for the controller is just making sure that the interaction between the controller and the UI as well as the actual model is in place and is working correctly. Now your job next, your challenge, is to create the test for the decrement counter. So go ahead, create a new test, add a new button, and see that if you can code the test for decrementing the counter. This video is part of my upcoming course on unit testing in iOS. So if you want to get latest update on the course, then simply subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get the latest updates when the course and other videos are being released. Meanwhile, you can jump in onto Udemy and find out all the courses that I have on Udemy, which also includes the best-selling course on Swift UI, the complete guide to new features in Swift 5, Node.js, RxSwift, MapKit, design patterns. There is just so much stuff that I have on Udemy that you can get access to. Now, the best way to get access to the Udemy courses is to look at the YouTube description and you will find the course links along with the coupons. Simply click on that and you will get the complete course. So I really hope that you enjoy these courses. And if you want to buy these courses, please use the YouTube links because that will be the best way to buy any of these courses that I have on Udemy. And that's really going to help a lot. So thank you so much. And if you have any questions, please let me know.